Hey everybody, Adam from Atlas Gunworks. Um, here to talk about our perfect match hammer and sear kit today. So I'll get a little more in detail on the, how they work and um, some nuances of, of doing a, a replacement. But basically this kit is designed um, to drop into an existing gun, a non-Atlas gun, and, um, and achieve a, a crisper, better trigger. So <clears throat> I'll get more in depth as we go, but if you just want to know what's in the bag, um, we'll start there and then you can drop off if you don't need any of this information. So. There's a EGW hammer and sear. What happens with these is that they go in a jig that we have hooked to a, a, a 200 times uh, video magnifier. And we put a hammer in that has correct hook angle and we just keep putting sears in until you get the perfect sear match. That's actually how we do it here at the shop. So that's uh, if you buy a hundred or more of these a month, they can just match them up really fast. It actually works better. Um, doesn't work really well if you only have two on hand and. They don't happen to match. Um, my procedure for doing a trigger job on an existing gun is that I leave the disco in there. I'll go into more detail in that in a minute, but no disco in this kit. Just use your factory disco. It's usually easier. Um, we got a strut in here with a pin. Um, you'll need to stake the pin. 17 pound mainspring. Not everybody will like that, but almost every single Atlas gun gets a 17 pound. It's kind of the do it all and lets you have a nice light trigger. And then uh, a factory Colt sear spring. Now this will need to be manipulated for sure. So the general theory is if your gun is dimensionally correct, you should be able to just manipulate the spring, drop in these parts and achieve a much better trigger pull than you, than you currently have. Anything from a light competition all the way up to a, a really crisp duty carry, you know, carry, whatever you want. Um, it's all adjusted. It, the brake weight, the return weight, all that's adjusted here. and. We have subsequent videos that talk about this, so I won't go way into detail on that. But So here are some of the, the uh, interesting parts about this. For this kit to work without any tuning, you're going to need to have your hammer and sear pin holes drilled parallel, perfectly parallel from one side to the other. And a lot of times what happens is when the, the machine comes down to make this, it cuts through the first side, and as it, it's sticking through the first side here, it's making a little contact and it makes the tip wiggle and then it, it doesn't pilot the per you know start the pilot in the right spot for the second side so often there's a little bit of a parallel uh, angle here sometimes it's a problem sometimes it's not but keep in mind that there's only 15 thou of engagement typically um, between the sear face and the hammer hooks and the hammer hooks in these cases are 18 or 20 thou tall so they're, they're it's a very small engagement it's very critical that those things are perfect and with a little bit of um, incorrect placement of these two holes or them being not perfectly straight that will cause a problem because when they're not straight and they sit in there on the pins in fact this cutaway is probably the best way to explain this um, when these two have a little bit of a taper one way or another you'll get more contact on one side or the other so the hammer hooks are not even across there's a, a right and a left um, so if we make contact on one side but not the other, that will create problems. We really need contact on both sides. A cute trick for that is just to take a marker, I use a blue Sharpie, put a line across the face here, and then you'll see where they, you know, you'll see if it's making contact. And it won't make full contact on the whole face, but you'll see nice, you want a drag mark on the right and left side where they, they match the hammer. Um, and so, and then it's just, if that is, if you are actually parallel there, um, and you know your better frames are going to be parallel, but it, there are far and few between lots of 1911s are crooked uh, And it can be worked around, but it involves a lot more work a lot more detail than we'll cover in this video Probably need to get a gunsmith involved um, And then you know manipulating the spring again. That's a detailed thing that we cover somewhere else Now the reason for the disco leaving the disco alone is that there's a whole bunch of things going on here But the disco is I'm going to pull this sear so the sear sits over the disco, and your disco is going to sit in this channel. Normally the sear would sit here, but the angle of this channel is really important, and the disco might have some kind of correction in it for something being improper there. The, the size of the head of the disco needs to match up so it can come up and be, you know, have unimpeded travel up through the frame. Um, <clears throat> the thickness here and the length overall 
are going to be different. So your disco, if it's in a gun that works, then we know it's tuned to the frame and the slide somewhat, and that we got a system that's working. It's also tuned to the trigger in the sense that this could be thinner or thicker down here, depending on what disco, and that will change your pre-travel setup. So I, I just leave on a on an existing gun that has a good a halfway decent trigger that works. Just leave the disco alone. Change the t change the engagement parts. And so that's our kit and. Um, Hopefully that saves a bunch of people some time. It works really, really well if your gun's perfectly parallel. If it's not, it requires some extra work, but it's still a better jumping off point um, than starting with these two potentially not matched. And this isn't a big um, difference in, in one that wasn't matched or was, but the very little bit of difference um, makes a huge, you know, that extra little bit of care um, and time. And we found that here at the shop. That's why we, we pre-match all of our stuff. It really speeds up the trigger jobs on the back end. Um, so somebody just sits here um, once a month and matches these up for a couple hours and um, we kick a few out for retail for you guys. So that's how I would do a trigger job. Those are the parts I would use. Um, and then again, if, if you're in over your head, for sure consult a gunsmith and uh, always follow the gun safety rules, especially when testing a gun that has a new trigger. And I hope to see you guys on the range soon.